Okay, from this point, then I'm going to move to Mr. Mishal. Easy on us, please. <laughs> Mr. Mishal, you describe this city as, as a magical city, Dubai. And I think most of the audience do agree with this. It is a magical city, especially at the rate of growth we've seen in the past couple of years. So most of, of our discussions are mainly with SMEs, small and medium enterprises. But when we go even to the big and large corporates, uh, most of the people think that they are all right. They have no problems with the banks. Instead, just bank do approach them to, get, to provide them with finance or uh, provide them with services or whatever else. So can we have your perspective on this, please? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil <clears throat> um, um, The problem I think a lot of banks have is that, as I think Alex uh, touched on it in the beginning, they don't really try to understand the business. Mm -hmm. uh, every business is different. Uh, whether you're a large company or a small company, every business is different. Um, I could be a small company in travel, and I could be a large company in travel. My, my requirements might be different. But it's still, I, you need to understand this, the cycle that goes in, for example, in travel is a much shorter uh, cycle versus that of construction, which is a much longer uh, cycle. If I, as a bank, came and proactively tried to understand what is the requirement of the customer, irrespective of the size, I think you'd have a better response, both from the customer and a more satisfied bank or financial institute serving them. Because what, ha what most of them do is they think, okay, uh, you, have the sorry, you have the money, uh, we'll look for collateral, we'll hold that as a hostage against you, uh, we'll charge you a lot of interest on this thing, and oh, by the way, every once in a while when things go pear-shaped, we'll restructure it on our terms again. So uh, it constantly makes the, the appetite for wanting to go to uh, financial institutions also something that you think about. Uh, those that look for financial institutions for growth in our part of the world are really taking a big risk because when things go pear-shaped, and they do go pear-shaped, as we've seen in the, from 2009 onwards, can come at a very expensive, excess, uh, very expensive cost. And I can think of two or three large companies here that have been in the paper that have experienced that because they thought that the banks were going to be, um, um, uh, sorry, the financial institution's job is to be your friend, your financial friend, to help you overcome it. Unfortunately, a lot of them over here look and say, no, no, that's not the way we're going to go. By the way, of the uh, post-World War II, the two countries that, have, uh, that everyone talks about, uh, they, 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 they did this industrial magic, which was uh, Japan and Germany. Well, the one thing that the financial institutes did over there is they actually bought into those companies themselves. Therefore, having a stake in those businesses, understood when to stretch and when to contract and when to give and when to pull back and when to allow certain, certain um, conduct to happen and when not to. But by taking the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, we, we've managed to take the Anglican, uh, Anglo mindset where the bank or the financial institute takes a step back away from the uh, ownership and therefore, as far as they're concerned, yeah, you fail, you, you succeed, yeah, good luck. Our job is to ensure our money comes back. Um, by having that distance, I think it has not served the customer well. Again, large or small, uh, this is just my personal opinion. <laughs>